Go. Okay. Well, thanks for talking to me. I appreciate it. Um, so, in previous Marvel films, uh, Phil Coulson has played more of a supporting role, kind of orchestrating things for Nick Fury, and what was it like being more of, like, the inspiration for pulling the team together this time around? Like, your character does one thing in particular that I don't really spoil for people that is uh, kind of the impetus for the team coming together. What was that like? I think he does a lot of things to pull the team together, and I actually, I think he's been trying to pull the team together in different ways throughout these movies, so it feels like a real logical extension of what he was doing. The fact that they chose to really use Coulson to do that was astonishing to me mm -hmm. and surprising. And uh, I, I gotta say, as someone who's a kind of a fanboy myself, I was honored. You know, like I, I give me this task. Yeah. I'm really, I was ready, and it felt like a real compliment to to the work we've done in the other movies uh, on developing Coulson that they had him do that job. Cool. Um, so, as an actor, what is it like playing the same character for all these different directors? What are the challenges of keeping that consistency? It's a really different question. It's a really good question. Uh, it's funny, they, they each come to the party with a different, slightly different take on Coulson, but there's something about him that they all seem to get. And it was always interesting, that, you know, early on to have this conversation with each of them about what Coulson would or wouldn't do. Because there was always stuff that we'd never seen Coulson do before because there was always, you know, illumination of who he is in a new way in each of the movies. And yet we wanted to keep it so that it never felt like it was pushing the audience out of their understanding of him. So mm -hmm. it was the balancing act of really being able to explore who Coulson was uh, without ever making anyone go, that's not Coulson. Yeah. Was there anything uh, along those same lines that you thought that he would do that they kind of... Uh, any of the directors ended up like reining in a little bit or anything that you wanted to do as that character that you didn't get a chance to do in, in the movies up until now? Anything you I remember thought, specifically like... there was one moment and it wasn't kind of me against Kenneth Branagh but we both went something about this scene doesn't feel right and it was a scene of me kind of running across the muddy compound to deal with the threat of this stranger who turns out to be Thor kicking everybody's butt and uh Finally, I, I, oh, I can't remember which one of us. We said, it's the running. There's plenty of people running. Coulson, he walks briskly. Yeah. And we kind of, as soon as we saw it on the monitor, we went, there, that's right. All right. Cool. Found the moment. Um, so you've worked with a ton of like really, really big name directors. And what is it like working with Joss Whedon specifically out of uh, you know all the people that you've worked with? What, what does he bring to the table that's different from you know Mamet and Favreau and Brahma and all these people? You know, uh, I didn't know Joss. I'd been a fan. The thing that, you know, Kenneth Branagh, weirdly, and John Favreau were weirdly kind of similar in really? that they both are actors. They're both really good actors. They're both very funny. And uh, they both were really clear and confident about what they wanted to do. And Joss, turns out actually he is a pretty good actor. He's more of a kind of, he's more similar to me in that we're both nerds who are getting to be in this nerd universe. Um, and his connection to, you know, the source material uh, is deeper, I think, than anyone's who I've worked with in these. And, and yet at the same time, his writing was on a par with as any as anyone I've worked with, you know, in terms of the way he mastered the script and the way he got this character's voice, and some of the just the humor of it. I felt like this reminds me of Good Sorkin or Mamet or the people I've been lucky enough to work with. Yeah, cool. Um, so in the Avengers, we find out that Coulson is kind of a Captain America fanboy. Uh, who is your personal favorite character in this universe? Um, you know, like Coulson, it really shifts from time to time. You know, there's that. Uh, there's always that kind of annoyance at the diva behavior of Tony Stark, but I think I also feel like Coulson does that Tony Stark is hilarious, and I have a lot of respect for him at the same time. My Clark Gregg's personal mm -hmm. fave? Yeah. You know, there's something about Scarlet's portrayal of Natasha Romanoff, especially in The Avengers, that just breaks me in two. It's magnificent and it, it it has a real emotional depth to it. Someone, you know, because this is the part of it that I'm interested in, that the people who are willing to, it's funny because it's similar to A Few Good Men, uh, which I was did the original Broadway production of, 
with that we're very young, Aaron Sorkin, is um, just people who need to stand on the wall. Yeah. And there's a cost. There's an emotional cost to that. And I think that's something that Joss wrote really well and that she and Jeremy really nailed. Yeah. Yeah, she was great. Um, so, let's see. Um, after all of this build-up, I mean, you've been working on these movies as long as, as Favreau and, and Downey and everything. What was it like for you to finally see this come together with everyone? Um, what, what was just, like, any highlights of the experience or anything that you can talk about as far as, like, your experience following this, you know, all of these franchises? Kind of yeah, you know, it's funny. It's a really good question. It seems like... It almost feel, it felt kind of funny to me because, you know, it's a superhero movie. But there's something about it I really care about. Yeah. And there's something about this character that really means a lot to me. And to kind of see his journey come to a fruition that I never imagined was really, really moving to me. And to see the whole movie come together and, and be something that... I felt so proud of, and, you know, I don't know why, but it felt like it was about something to me. It wasn't just, oh, that was a great kick. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just there's something buried underneath this that made the comics popular, that I think has made these movies popular, that it's ours, it's American, it's about the kind of things where we want to be proud of ourselves about, and the way that those things have eroded. So, did you and Sam Jackson have any conversations uh, in particular about like the backstory between your two characters? Because you guys appear together on screen a lot. You have this this very uh, kind of cool relationship. Did you guys have any discussions about that? You know, I feel like it's been so clear. I just he and I know each other. I feel like our relationship is a little bit like this. Mm -hmm. I, I had the temerity to try to direct him in a play, which he was <laughs> magnificent in, like fifteen years ago, and so we knew each other and. Um, it just felt right to us. You know, there wasn't... I don't know what his version of our backstory is. I bet it's not the same as mine, but I really like mine, so I don't want to mess it up. Yeah, sure. Cool. <clears throat> All right, well, yeah, I'll leave you alone, but thanks very much for, uh, for your time.